Hi, I'm here again with David Round. David, thanks for being back on the show. Oh, thanks for having me again. So we're continu continuing our series talking about BIPA, the Illinois Biometric Information Protection Act, and what employers should do, uh, especially those New York employers that have satellite offices in Chicago that uh, track their employees and whatnot, and how they should things they might want to do beforehand so that they don't get into trouble. So uh, with that, David, uh, what are some of the concerns and responsibilities employers have under BIPA? Well, first of all, they have an obligation to notify employees that they are using biometric information. And they have to tell them why they're using biometric information. Uh, they have to safeguard the information. They have to have policies in place to safeguard the information and they are absolutely prohibited from selling the information to third parties. So that would mean if they're using time tracking software, they might want to check to see what, um, what attestations those software companies have in terms of how they protect the employee fingerprints and whatnot? Absolutely. And is it a good idea for the employer to actually get the employee to sign a consent form? Absolutely, in fact, they're required to uh, obtain consent before yeah. doing this. And these are, this is an important consideration for employers, and it should be something that is well thought out and uh, a program put into place that uh, complies with the law before embarking on the use of biometric information. So, so employers, if you have a trading firm here in New York that has a satellite trading, you know, possibly an option firm, options are big in Chicago, uh, what would you advise them to do just to do a checkup and make sure that they're okay? Well, uh, if you're going to be using your employees' biometric information in Illinois, it would be covered by BIPA, and you need to make sure you're in compliance with the law, and I think it makes sense for your in-house legal team or uh, you, whatever counsel you rely on to go over what you plan to do and ensure that what you're going to be doing is in compliance with the law. Yeah. So I, I think the intent, though, of a lot of these tracking features of time tracking software really is to, to try to protect employees from you know, punching in for their friend that's running late. And, but there are other ways that the employers could still do that without relying on fingerprints or retina scans. There are other ways. Smartphones can be used and they can, and they can be used without taking any biometric information. Uh, and there are other ways of doing it as well. Yeah. Uh, but if you are going to be using biometric information, you certainly should make sure that you're in compliance with BIPA because it's been a very active area in litigation. There's been a lot of class actions lately, and a lot of companies have had some issues. And it, it mm -hmm. would most employers would be well advised to uh, uh, make sure they don't run afoul of the law. Mm -hmm. So why are we suddenly hearing so much about BIPA in Illinois? What happened last year that that changed things? Well, there was a, a an Illinois Supreme Court case that really. Um, kind of open the floodgates for plaintiffs to be able to sue. Normally, in order to bring a lawsuit, you have to be able to show that you stuff, suffered some specific harm, which is referred to in the law as damages, and that's an element of most civil causes of action. However, under the way BIPA is written, an aggrieved party can bring a private right of action under BIPA. And the, the Illinois Supreme Court, in a case called Rosenbach last year, uh, basically held that the mere violation of the law for, with respect to someone's biometric information makes that person an aggrieved party. So the fact that your biometric information has come out of compliance in a, in a program mm -hmm. means that you would have standing to bring a lawsuit and more importantly, that you could potentially be the lead plaintiff in a class action lawsuit, which ups the ante significantly for employers and uh, exposes them to much more significant liability. Mm -hmm. So th this could expose any employer using time tracking that has a biometric component in Illinois? Potentially, yes. Now, are there things that, that can help protect those employers, though, from getting in crosshairs that they are using that software? Well, as, I mean, ensuring that you're in compliance with the law, certainly, yeah. which means making sure that you're getting consent, making sure that the consent is informed consent and that the consent is in full compliance with the requirements of BIPA. 
not doing anything that BIPA prohibits, such as selling the information to third parties. It sounds pretty uh, uh, obvious, but it, it's something that's important to make sure that you're in compliance with the law. Yeah, there, there was a case in Illinois involving, um, it was an athletic uh, gym that had customer information and, and some of that information was alleged to have gone to outside parties and I, I think that case settled but uh, it certainly uh, not only employers could fall into the snare of BIPA but consumers as well, people who do business with companies that choose to take their biometric data. Absolutely. Like possibly even Google and Facebook. Potentially, yes. No. Well, thanks a bunch. On our next segment, we'll talk a little bit more about what's happening national with, nationally with BIPA. And um, thanks again for being on the show. Thanks for having me.